Hello, gorgeous. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Give Them Lala podcast. Before we deep dive into it all, I need to remind you to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and make sure you comment on this video because I love to bump gums. Thank you. Hello, gorgeous. Welcome back to the Give Them Lala podcast. If I do say so myself, Monday's boner bonus episode was hitting different. <laughs> so <laughs> funny and fun. I loved it. I why, loved it. Why are the bonus episodes so good? They're so good. I think it's because we talked about this. I think it's because we, instead of being overwhelmed with so much to talk about, we get to focus on one little thing, which allows us to deep dive into like funny and fun details. And also we're like opening up to the audience and the audience writes in. So yes. it's just like a giant kick it session with all of our friends who are also writing in about horrific or funny moments yes. like anal with conditioner. <laughs> uh, dying, after, dying over that. Trying and with the goggles. I'll, I'd, I'd like you guys to know, we'll tease this. There was a clip cut and it was about something I talk in the bonus episode and I thought, you know what? Maybe this isn't the best promo clip. You can still hear it on the bonus episode, but it's basically my worst experience and um, it's interesting. We were driving here today and Jessica was like, you know the original clip that they cut was me ha having come on my face with goggles. And I, the Santa and she Claus. goes, yeah, yes, Santa yeah. Claus come. Mind you, we, t we were in that, I was like, yes, you guys cut that clip. It's going to be hilarious. And then they sent it to me and I was like, was I really that graphic? You were very I graphic we, and it was awesome. It. And then she says in the car, she goes, there's going to be a day where I have like kids and I don't really know that I want like someone to be like, hey, I saw this clip of your mom like having come all over her face. And I'm like, Jessica, let me tell you something. I was just if about Kim to say. Kardashian can <laughs> just get dicked down by Ray J, for all the hours in the world and still be the number one celebrity on all the planets ever, we're all just fine. Do you That's think right. your kids have seen it? Oh, well, I remember Saint came in and was like, look at this thing on Roblox, mom. Yeah. And it's like her acting all sexy and she's like, what the fuck? And then Kanye West goes and steals all the computers. I never. I, from Ray J or whoever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember he comes in with like a suitcase full uh. of old school computers. <laughs> Which is like so, whatever, so dumb because it's like he could have just made copies. It was the principle, I guess, and like the dramatic effect yeah, for the show. And yeah. Kim's like sobbing. Uh. Well, I your like, kid is now going to know that you had cum on your face. Well, you know what? I do hope one day, if it's a girl or a boy, um, that they are comfortable experimenting sexually at the right age. You know what? That's a great answer. At and the right getting age. cum on their face if they so choose. The, yes. So. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> um, With all right. consent. So yeah. let's talk about um, the week, the weekend. Uh, I tell Jessica, because as you guys know, uh, I moved into a new home. And so we've been task rabbiting our asses off. Now, Jessica and I treat task rabbit like it's um, Tinder or Bumble. <laughs> like we say, scroll in. She sends me photos, me zooming in, being like, how tall is he? And then remembering like that. Doesn't really matter on Task Rabbit. <laughs> I literally was like, "Do we know the height of this person?" I'm like, "He's got blue eyes. I'd rather go for brown eyes for you, Law." And yeah, you're I'm like, a yeah, I like the brown eyes. Yeah. Um. So she sends me a plethora of hot men, and I said, "You know what? We can't go wrong with any of them. I'm gonna let you choose." So she picks one, and I come home. Well, first of all, Easton sends me a message. Me and Jess, and he goes, "Uh, the Jess." The task rabbiter is a fucking looker, Law. You got to get home. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so excited. No. She goes, perfect. I'm in glam. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did the after she show with Brittany. She said, perfect. I'm in glam. <laughs> oh, that never happens. <laughs> I'm never in glam. The last hot one, weren't you in, like, sweats or something? I think, right? Fuck you, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> you look Are hot you saying I'm not hot no. in sweats? <laughs> you looked at Look at you right now. Look at you right now. I could Jordan. always be hotter. No. It's fine, though. Whatever. This is called confidence at its finest. You can't tell me shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I roll in, and he's, like, hammering away. And my mom is like, he is so cute. Go in there. And so I, like, go, and I'm like, hey, how's it going? He's like, it's going really well. I'm like, how do I get him to turn around? <laughs> <laughs> so my mom then. 
I don't know. How do you this get a time so rabbit cute. or hard at work? Say, <laughs> make, <laughs> make an Ikea furniture. He didn't turn around. You came in and said, Lisa, hey, how's it going? Lisa poked the line to get in to turn yeah, he around. Asked, he, she goes, so where are we going to keep this here? <laughs> and then he turns. And then I imagine when he saw me, it was like, <laughs> All right, so he is fine. Okay, so he was fine. Did he like, did his eyes widen a little when he saw you? Oh, they always widen, of honey. Of course, of course. Come oh, this is now. exciting. I wasn't Jessica, there. Jessica, so don't I'm, ask I'm stupid hearing. questions on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing all this for the first time along with you guys. So you show up. You're, is he tall? Because he seemed tall in the photo. He's tall. Okay. He's tall. He's hot. He's hidden. Okay, so all is good. Um, we tell him that we are going to do something, right? Like, if you need anything, let us know. You want to know what he asks us mm. for? <laughs> do you have any snacks? <laughs> mm, 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 mm. I go like this. I go, snacks? <laughs> like food? <laughs> and my mom, <laughs> I walk out to my mom. I'm like, he wants snacks. She's like, <laughs> snacks? Like what? Like an uncrustable? I'm I was the, like, I don't know. I'm chips. on the couch <laughs> listening to him, too. And, like, they're like, well, what do we give him? He looks like. Like a healthy person. I think like, he's like a healthy person. I think we have nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so when he asks for snacks, are keep you- in mind he dr- he drained us dry of every water bottle in the house. He was didn't water even... first or snacks? Water Both was first because to... oh. you have to remember. I came home around three. He had been there for a solid couple hours. Okay. 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 Which seem he seemed like he was there for a very long time. Okay. And you know what? He was hot. Until he was not anymore. <laughs> it started with the snacks. All right. You're pissing me off, buddy. Then I take off. Ethan stays home and he calls me and he goes, he wants to know if you have a step stool for the TV. I go, no, I don't got a step stool. That's why I hired a task rabbiter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we needed to, be <laughs> to a bit bring taller. the things to hang right. the stuff. Right. No, right. Do I look like someone who has step stools and ladders? I have step stools to put my dishes away, but that's me. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's true. High cabinet. That's true. I have a nice stool to put my dishes away. But no, you do not then look like someone. Then he asks me for a pencil okay. to measure the TV. Sir. I hear Isn't him turn on. is the TV on, on the box? Not, then I get home. Then I get home. The TV. The measurement is on the box. What does he need to? He needs to. I told him I would like it three inches above uh. where my lighting is. You should have said three inches, sir. Do you? What do you think about three inches? Pull your do you dick think it's out average? and measure three <laughs> inches. <laughs> right. Do you think it's average? Do you think three inches is big or small? What do you think? Okay. Sorry. I don't mean to objectify the task rabbiter. So anyway, keep going. So Eason tells him we don't have a step stool. I arrive back at the house. He then asks me again, do you have a step stool? I then tell him, are we really still fucking doing that? The TV's not hung. I don't say that. Right. Because I'm still thinking he's going to redeem himself. Right. He's up there listening to the basketball game, comes back down about 27 hours later and goes, so I forgot my TV hanging tool. I'm going to have to come back tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, now you're fully annoying and I never want to see you again. What do right. you, and what have you been, I go up there. He, he built the, the thing that the TV hangs on. The wall And it was thing? like three hours he was up there. Yeah, the guy like you minutes. hired today, Jessica, because I told Jessica, Jessica, I told him to come Monday, but you immediately need to let him know he doesn't need to come back. <laughs> I made Jessica do all the dirty work. I'm like, yeah, we'll see you Monday. You did a great job today. Jessica, tell him I'm to the bitch. fuck off. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And I hire someone who is not hot. Yeah. Just somebody. So anyway, and the task rabbiter today. Yeah. He built hella IKEA shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. He was fast. He hung the he TVs. Hung he hung my TV. Right. He hung mirrors. In and out. He was great, How right? Long? In and out. Two hours, dude. Oh. He was fantastic. He wasn't, he was like, from what he looked like in the photo, okay, I would like to say, but before, you have a theory. You have a theory about Task The, the okay. first Task Rabbit guy. What I have to say really quick, we're not obje- objectifying Task Rabbiters. If anything, it's just like, if anything, we objectify everybody, <laughs> not just the Task but Rabbit people. But just so people. you know, I'm not on Task Rabbit looking to find Lala dates. I'm like, you know what? If she could, I candy, I candy. candy. That's what it is. Yes. Is that object? That's objective. No, it is for sure. I am objectified <laughs> every day of my life. Okay, oh, and all so I'm, I'm not asking not to wrong. grab your ass, <laughs> right? I'm no, not you and you to come in and pay you to do what right. you're already going to be doing. And by the way, you also get to look at me. So right. you're welcome. Right. I'm basically paying you to look at me. Right. I mean, if and that I don't need to job. pay for that <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, 
Today's task rabbiter <laughs> on a was scale of cute. one to ten, how many how many people want to kill me on this episode? A uh, lot. Right now, no. Hella we, people. No. That's, okay, this so, is funny. Uh, today's <laughs> looks like Andrew. Do you know who Andrew Santino Santino yes. is? Didn't that is it? Do you know who that is? Mm-mm. Oh, Comedian. did you see today's task rabbiter? No. I think he looked like that. So he's like cute. He's got red hair. Um, I told her type in someone who's good at hanging TVs. Mm. And did you? Sure did. He mounting, did it. Like, good at mounting, but like not mounting sexually. Mounting, hanging, hanging. But the first TV. guy I think was there for the mounting for sexually. For the mounting sexually. I do have to say, look, I know that TaskRabbit is not a website for um, sex perverts. But, or, or sex work. But is it? Do I say this, you guys? <laughs> I feel like he was up there waiting for you to like okay, walk Okay, all we're looking for on Task Rabbit is say more than just I'm good with my hands and mounting. Oh, you guys, yes. Because I go through and I'm like, part of me, I know Task Rabbit, amazing website. I love it. But part of me was like, the way some of these people are writing what they're good at, men and women, by the way, they're mm. like, amazing at mounting, great with my hands, bring such a good energy to the home space. And I'm like, that's great. <laughs> I'm sure you are great at mounting things to a wall, but like we hired this guy because he was good at mounting and he, he left it at that and he wasn't great at mounting anything. In Did fact, the he, one thing I asked him to mount, he couldn't even do because he forgot his tool. tool. Does that mean condoms? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. When uh, there's very, a lot of s- similarities between, um, like Taz Rabbit, if you'd like to sponsor the podcast, we're all in. <laughs> <laughs> well, we obviously love you and we're obviously pushing for you. We always have used you. Did he hang so he didn't get your TV hung? Mm-mm. The first one. No, and his ratings are super high and it's cause he's hot. Is They're, that why? Yeah. The only and thing you he know did what? was build three things from IKEA and if six I hours. weren't if I weren't a Virgo, mm-hmm. I could have let a lot of the shit slide. Right. But the Virgo in me was like, I've had enough. Right. I've had enough. Sorry. Remove yourself <laughs> from the premise. <laughs> I'm it's, sorry, Lal. That was my bad, you, you guys. I went for looks. But you know what? The second time, I went for um, quality and talent, and we did it. I love it. I appreciate so. you, Jess. Um, okay, over the weekend, uh, the Dune 2 premiere in New York City happened. Zendaya continued to kill it. Did you see her look? Is it Zendaya or Zendaya? I, I think, think it's Zendaya. Zendaya. I think it's Zendaya. Zendaya. She's smoking She's hot. She's smoking hot. And, and it, her yeah. looks on carpets are, like, unparalleled. Is she still with... Do you know if she's still with um? What's his name? Charlie or Charlemagne? Charle? No, she's not with Timothy. No, Charlemagne's with Kylie Jenner. Oh, that's who it was. The other who one. was she with? I don't um, know. Spider Man. Who? Holland. Tom Holland. Yeah, that's it. They oh, and he was part. in that one show that I started watching and never finished. That weird one. Uh, that weird one where he makes things up in his mind. Oh. He thinks things are happening. What? What the fuck? What movie say. was that? Tom Holland. It was really, really good. And he goes to like a psych ward. Hold on, Tom. Holland. Crowd- Crowded room. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh. I need to finish it. Um, so she looked smoking hot. The other thing that happened was Travis Kelsey um, was back in Vegas celebrating the big win um, after he went to Australia to support his girlfriend, Taylor Swift. Oh, he's still celebrating. He's still celebrating, yeah. you guys. Winning the Super Bowl is a big, a deal. big effing deal. A BFD. Be celebrating too. Mm-hmm. Big effing deal. BFD. Um, and yeah. the club, I think it was Excess. Played Love Story by um, Taylor. Sure. And he was popping bottles and singing at the top of his lungs. Now, to me, I just don't feel like Love Story would pop off drunk in a club. <laughs> no. I've Unless been drunk a in a club before. <laughs> to Love Story? Not to Love Story. <laughs> Fuck no. I mean, I can't get, like, I don't think any like Taylor song. Swift is, like, a club song. Oh, I think that you could get down to, like. The only one I like is Cat Eyes. I do oh, you want eye. trouble when you walk uh, If that in. plays in the club, I'm walking out. Blah, 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 blah. They could do remixes. Well, I mean, you could do that too. You anyway. could play yeah. the but one with the the remix where it's only her chorus and then it's Kendrick Lamar yeah. does the verses. You could play that in the club. There, yeah. But love story, she's like, baby, just say yes. Like, it's like not <laughs> something. Like, if that came in and I was vibing in the club drunk, I don't care if Travis Kelsey's, I don't care if Taylor Swift is there herself. I'd be like, it like scratch the record. <laughs> huh? Can we wrap this up? Can we wrap this up? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so that happened. Uh. Um, I have heard from multiple uh, sources, allegedly, 
I don't want to be sued by two celebs <laughs> on a team. No, no. Um, that this is all PR. It don't exist for real. What? Yep. I NFL, don't believe it. I don't NFL believe it. NFL needed more money, and this was all. That's what I've seen. It could have turned into maybe something, but I've heard, I've heard allegedly <laughs> that he's still out in these streets smashing. They know, yeah. Maybe they have an open relationship. Don't come for me, Swifties. I'm just <laughs> reporting the news that I've heard, and I'm only reading the headlines. We're about to get an album. Do you think that there's a world in which they have a mutual understanding? They're both hot, so they're have like, you sure, we'll think- Taylor Swift album? Yeah, I don't think no, Taylor Swift No, there's no mutual is- understanding. Yeah. If you come correct, and you are romantic, and yeah. you love on me, mm-hmm. now it could have been like something that was set up and then maybe turned into something real, but I have heard, allegedly... <laughs> Wow. I, I just feel like she's way more open now. I feel like she probably has threesomes sometimes. I feel like I just. I've heard she's a freak. I, that, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I, I have heard she's a freak. I think she's a little more open now. I could see her having an open relationship with him and being like, you're hot. I'm hot. You do your thing. I'll do my thing while I'm out of the country. The publicity's but, great. Yeah. That's true. Good for them. Um, did you guys see Cam? Do you know who Cam Newton is? Mm-hmm. Yes. So yeah. Cam yes. Newton was recorded being jumped. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't I condone saw the video. violence. I didn't see this video. But my God, this was sexy. Yeah, I mean, he stood. Y- you could hardly call it being jumped as he was throwing these people off of him. Look like at he's how the hot Hulk. He is. No, he's, he's smoking. Just he's like a the, freaking smoke yeah. show. Yeah. The way he handles himself. <gasps> how many people were on it? It was uh, like five, I think. A ton of people. And they did he get and him off? And they just kept coming <gasps> after him and he was just flinging them off. It was almost like, what is. You know when there's like an elephant or some no. What are those movies where you see like the little hyenas <laughs> and they're jump and they're jumping on them and they like are shaking them yeah. off? You know what I'm talking about? I yeah. do. Or that, have you seen a giraffe like Avatar. plow through Avatar. a lion? You know the big old yep. and those like little scary dog looking things are jumping on him mm-hmm. and he's and shaking them off. Him off. That was Cam Newton flinging them off. <laughs> Did he get hurt? He didn't look like he got hurt. I didn't see the aftermath. All I saw was a video of him flinging them. Wow. He seemed to walk away just as tall and sexy as he See, was now that's before so he got jumped. Jumped. You little bitch boys who jumped him. You little bitch boys. I know. And you needed like 12 of you guys. Ew. Squares. Losers. Broad daylight at some like convention or oh something. My God. I know. There's tents. There uh, were tents. Yeah. It was like Cam was showing yeah. up for like an appearance. Like a farmer's market. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's all very lame. Yeah. Um, so Sandoval did an interview, um, and it said that I, it, he said that Lala missed the mark fashion wise at emo night. Mm. And number one compliment: <laughs> the moment I hit the mark at emo night, <laughs> someone call somebody because I'm unwell. Okay, I better never hit the mark at emo night. <laughs> Oh, no. So, not an insult. Huge compliment. Also, (laughs) Sandoval can never talk to me or anybody else about missing a mark fashion-wise. Because I've talked about this before. I used to, like, walk into Bloomingdale's or fucking, like, Neiman's and Nordstrom. And I would look at things and be like, who the fuck would buy that? And then Sandoval would show up and I'd be like, oh, "Oh, there we go. (laughs) There's the guy. And there he is, Herman Munster. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you came down in your Herman Munster shoes. They're Louis Vuitton shoes. Well, even Louis Vuitton makes mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he goes on now that I... The point of this mm. was he then says that I've missed the mark many times fashion-wise. But it's only the the things that he gives are... um, What is it when you dress up? Like costumes. Costumes. Oh. Oh. I'm like not good at co- night. themes. Themes. A themed theme. night. I always miss the mark. Okay, and I will forever miss the mark because I am horrible at dressing up. And I, I don't care. You I don't have care, to do say, you? you don't miss the mark because that cowgirl hat. You kind of started the cowboy hat craze with the sequin. They love to steal from Lala, but it's fine. And it's if fine. and mm, Sandoval missed the mark at the dinner on this past episode with his cowboy yeehaw paisley black and white shirt. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I thought he what the, the hell mark. is that? That was a little too, or it was a little too on the mark. Whatever it was, wasn't little working. too themey. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's great yeehaw. at a theme. I'm horrible. So he goes on to say, I had, there was a time I had this 70s roller skating party Mm. and Lala showed up in a a boxer's robe, boxing shorts and gloves. And so I'm like, 
I remember that 70s roller skating party because my dad had just, my dad had died that season. I roll next door to Sheena because she fucking remembers everything. Mm-hmm. I go, Sheena, that 70s roller skating party Sandoval had, what did I, what season was that? And she goes, that was season seven. I was like, I knew it. I am very much not in what he claims I was in. All right. But he's a liar. Okay. So we know that. Here I am, positive vibes. In a blue, this is the time that I, are, does that, <gasps> am Wait. I? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Very cute. Very cute. Video. I want you to me send me this. Smoking so we weed like a champion. This was the season of only smoking weed. Oh, good for you. And I have a, a dick sucker around my neck. Oh, oh a fuck. dick like lollipop. Like a lollipop. Because <laughs> okay, dick sucker. Because I was like, there's. I remember this. <laughs> I've never prouder. shown up anywhere in a in a boxing robe. So here we go, guys. This is the. This is what he was talking about. Can we share this? Can yes, I, we're okay. going to share it because here's the thing. You can say whatever the fuck you want. You can say I missed the mark, but what you're not going to do is lie on me, fool. All mm-hmm. right? Like, if you're going to come and say X, Y, and Z, like, your receipts need to match. All right? Yeah. Don't try to cook the books, bitch. Yeah. All right? Preach. Not with me. <laughs> <laughs> also, he has very selective memories like I told you on the Nick- selective you mean he makes shit up yes yes <laughs> like he remembers so what we're gonna be kind of a selective memory or he seems to I don't know him but he seems to have people wanted me to call him out remember you guys I'm off social media creating a beautiful environment for myself these past few months and people were asking me I guess he compared Scandaval to George Floyd and BLM and that whole thing and uh, the OJ Simpson trial. And I don't even know what to say about it because, number one, it's just so out of touch that anyone could ever think. Like, so we all remember that time. It was devastating to the point where, not the OJ trial, I was a young child, but um, when George, George Floyd. Floyd and his passing happened, like, we didn't even do the podcast. Like, we were in a time of, like, mourning and just, we really couldn't even wrap our heads around, like, what society had come to, right? Mm -hmm. Scandaval, we were podcasting our asses off. (laughs) Let's talk about it! (laughs) Right! Not the same, but it's just, it just goes to show how out of touch, and I, I, he doesn't, he doesn't speak, he doesn't think before he speaks, and it's so out of, just out of touch with reality and what's in front of him that I don't even know what to say because this is just who he is. And if we keep him under a microscope, we're going to constantly find things that Mm -hmm. he says where it's like, wow. And I just have no desire. I had a beautiful season. It was a lot of ups and downs with my emotions. This season, I was all about myself and my own healing. It really, you guys will see, with him, and you may be turned off a bit during scenes just based off of how he's been acting recently, and it's just not adding up. But any conversations that I have, they're strictly for myself. It it sounds corny when people say you forgive for yourself, not other people. It For the first time, it rings incredibly true. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, do not give yourself credit in this moment. This is for me to move on and live a really, really fantastic life. And what you go on to do is not going to affect me anymore. Good. Let's do BH real quick. Okay. Um. So if you guys watched the finale, mm-hmm. tonight's the re- first part of the reunion. Um, Kyle has this white party. Easton, I don't know if you know about it. It's literally been happening since season one of BH. Um, this year it was hosted at SoFi and the budget was $400,000, which that is badass. Is that that through Bravo or through? Bravo. Mm -mm. Kyle Richards. No, Kyle Richards is funding this stuff. I have to say, hosted at SoFi, I'm actually shocked it was not more. I know that sounds so out of touch, but I'm dead serious. Can I, I tell you, I and thought... I was like, damn, they got a steal. Yeah. The same thing. I'm shot 400 grand. Maybe... Do you think it was because I we've you rarely see an event like that, like something so private hosted there, and they were like, we're brand new. Maybe you guys could come in, show it on BH. It's been a crazy season. Like, 
come in, have it here. We'll give you a huge discount because then other people say, can see that you can, like, we're not just here to have concerts and football games. You can literally rent this out event. for a small little party on the football field. Yes, I For the totally, low cost of 400 grand. Right, and that being said, Sofi, if you would like to um, allow us to have an event there, I'm sure we can figure something out. Yeah, but not for 400 grand. <laughs> 20 bucks and we'll be there. Yeah, right? We ball on a budget. <laughs> um, I thought that was amazing. Kevin Lee is back at it. Mm -hmm. He's planning the party. If we remember Kevin Lee, he planned Pandora's wedding. He does all of LVP's events. He body shamed my friend Katie. <gasps> um, season six, I want to say, but he did apologize. Um, and in that moment, Kyle also got a few jabs in to LVP. Uh, we won't say much about that, but it was just like, it was very interesting to see Kevin Lee show up working for Kyle, and I'll be very curious to see if he ever plans another event for Lisa Vanderpump. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe maybe she got rid of him, and so he came on for Kyle. Mm. But you know what? There it's hard to say no to a budget of $400,000. That seems like something that you would want to take on. Exactly. And... There are a handful, I've heard, of these event planners who just are the ones that it's, like, not hard to find in L.A., but I've heard, like, you know, the classic, like, if you can lock in these eight, one of the eight uh, mm -hmm. L.A. event planners, because Mindy Weiss is another. Yes, it's obviously. Like, she so, does all Kardashians. Yeah. Um, did you guys notice that when, so Mo's there, Kyle comes in, mm -hmm. and did you notice that Mauricio says, hi, how are you? Mm. She's like, good, how are you? I thought that was so, like, obviously we know they're having issues, right? Mm -hmm. But like the only time I ask someone how they are, like even Jessica, who I go like a weekend without seeing, I don't, when she arrives, say, hi, how are you? It's so weird. It's so like haven't seen you in a long time. How's it been? I think that's it. How long do you think it had been between them seeing each other? But every time I see you and mom, I always say, how are you? How have you been? And I, I see you guys daily. It. That's true. You get in my car and I go, how are you? How are you Every feeling? time I see you in the office, I yeah. walk in and I go, how are you? I could have seen you That's here great. and then there. That's how a are great you? point. So maybe I'm just so, a dick and need to take, <laughs> I don't, maybe, take curiosity in other people. It's weird in a <laughs> husband and wife. <laughs> see, but for me, I don't say to Jessica, how are you? I say, like, how was your weekend? Yes. For, a hus for an ex, husband and wife who share kids it is a little weird to be like okay, how and, are you see, okay i'm not that know. but yeah. i just say it to you guys so maybe i'm just this is playing. why we have the podcast to start the conversation mm. i thought it was weird um erica is the performer mm. looking so freaking hot oh i, thought I know you were <laughs> she's smacking different <laughs> she hits mm. different mikey can't even do the prayer because he's so emotional she's been off stage for four years dealing with just life that came in with the, you know, the side swipe. And can I tell you, this is like a, this is like you go bitch, right? She's like now performing. Granted, it's her friend, whatever, but she's at SoFi. Mm -hmm. She's clearly talented, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not only does she come in looking like that, she performs It's Expensive to Be Me. Are you kidding me? <laughs> And then the way that they shot her, I, I had chills all over my body. Yeah. It was unbelievable. And to see women who have been done so dirty by, like, these powerful men, and then they end up coming out on top and rising, and you see, like, oh, the powerful one in this dynamic was always her. Yes. <sighs> I got to say, I've seen, as you can probably tell— clips of this episode but not the full thing but I did watch that and I was like that gave me goosebumps I was like this is good she's such a presence on stage I isn't know. she I know Kyle's a real one I'll say that I, every time it panned to her she was singing the lyrics yeah. oh, that's a real you one right not? there so supportive right yeah yeah I I was truly blown away mm -hmm. I was like damn I wonder if it was like this in person probably not everything's always better like, even the Super Bowl halftime show. Yeah. It See, always looks cooler on TV because of, like, all the camera angles yeah, that you get to hit. Spinning like around. Spins around. I don't, I disagree. I actually feel like I hear you and I, for the Super Bowl, yes. But I feel like that was probably so great in person because everyone knew her and the energy. She oh, the is, energy for sure. The energy from her off sta on, on stage or however you'd say it, off stage. You'd be feeding from it, I think. I have to go to her show in Vegas. Yeah. 
When is it? Can I come? Yeah, she has a residency. Mm. Mm, yeah, let's go. Mm. Easton, you're so dead. Over here. Um, I And they actually, so it was a very quick, like, I want to say episode when it came to all of the ladies. I don't think that Anna Marie is going to be back. Mm. You don't? I, don't? I don't think so. I don't find her to be... Wildly interesting. Just not housewife material. Yeah. I don't think. You know, I liked her at first. I think I, we have it. I have me on here saying that, like, the first few. I'm like, oh, she's so down-to-earth and real. I but love then her. Became, I don't want a down-to-earth housewife. Right. That's the thing that was like, then you I know? was like, oh, maybe this is not We housewife. have our down-to-earth housewife. Her yeah. name's Kyle Richards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Went from the house, the Palm Springs house that she got from her mother to just hundreds of millions of mm-hmm. dollars. All right? That's what I'm trying to see. <laughs> That's true. That's down to earth. Yeah. For me. That's down to earth. <laughs> um, For me. <laughs> the end of it, I would say, was like truly devastating, Jess. Yeah. Did you watch it, Easton? I yeah, think you when, did. Yeah. The family. So it's like one month later, then a week later, and they call the family together. And I want to get a little bit cheesy. We'll wrap this up pretty quickly. I want to just think... The, is it Umansky? Mm-hmm. Umansky slash Richards. Because we have been watching this family for, I want to say, what, 13, 14 years? And that conversation where Farah comes over to the house, it's been leaked that Kyle and Mauricio have indeed separated, and they sit in the family room, and they have a very difficult conversation, and Portia starts sobbing. I know what it's like to film a reality TV show. And it becomes very intense, right? So just as someone who's a fan of the show, a viewer, someone who's been in it, but also someone who I haven't been in a relationship for that long, I don't know what it's like to really have a solid foundation that you think is solid, and then there's a there's only a crack in the house because this motherfucker decided to take a sledgehammer to it. Like, literally, we were all good. And for them to allow cameras in, for us to see, I just want to thank them because that I know that that's not easy. And it just goes to show that, like, we've seen what perfection looks like. We've seen now what cracks look like. And a family that goes from, you know, really being very, very strong to we don't really know what's next. But to see Kyle who's been a fabulous wife, a fabulous mother. Then she comes into her own, and you you see her juggling all of it, like trying to do her own thing while also being a good wife and mom and being supportive. To then, they cut to her in her interview, and they say, what has happened where you don't know that you can come back from this? And she said, things have happened where the trust is broken, and I don't think I can get over it. To see her, even after 27 years and four children later, say, no matter what, I'm still going to pick me. And I will not compromise my happiness to suit you. And I love this family and I love this family enough to say, without my happiness, I am worthless to all of you. And I think that's very inspiring for, and this is, it goes back to when I say, I resent what Bethany Frankel says, because Bravo offers such a platform where there's many women who sit there and they're like, what the fuck is next for me? They're going to watch people like Kyle Richards and go, I'm going to be okay. I can choose my own happiness and it's still going to benefit other people. Mm -hmm. So there's that. (laughs) Yeah. No, I totally agree. I thought it was beautiful. And that is such an important message. And the older I get, the more I feel that. And it... Because when I was younger, it used to feel selfish, Mm. you know, in like early 20s, like, yeah, but I need to be happy. It's like, you know, so I was a lot of doing a lot of people pleasing. The older I get, the more I'm like, I am worthless if I'm not happy with myself because I want to give you guys what you deserve. But if I'm not happy, you're not going to get that from me. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's important. I thought it was beautiful. Good for her. Go into every single relationship. I love you, but I will always love me more. Yeah. Yeah. I know it sounds very strange and foreign, but without having the utmost and highest level of self-love, you are worthless to the people around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, Miami was a little bit snoozy. Um, In honor of the Miami finale, I wore my um, Michael Michael Jordan Jordan 
It's so Sweat cool. Suit. It has matching sweatpants, you guys. You it can't does. see them, but they're awesome. And I have my Jordans on that you also can't see. Can't mismatch. I actually liked the little scene with Larsa and Marcus, him like making her feel, because you know, I'm sure that that was tough when Michael Jordan, your boyfriend's dead, <laughs> is like, no, I don't approve of the relationship. You would, even though Larsa is, she's a tough bitch, right? Like I know her, she does not fuck around. Mm -hmm. It still is like, ouch. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really feel that great. No. But Marcus swoops in. Yeah, but he also, makes, like, laughs about it. He laughs about he it. He laughs it when he was like, well, he said no. And, like, laughs. It's like, well, I mean, at, to me, that was weird. Yes. But also, he's not trying to sugarcoat it. And he also says, I respect my dad's opinion, but really the, the most important one is my mom's. And my mom fucking loves her. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, let's try to balance this out and make our girl feel good. He gives her a promise ring. Um, did you see he? she took him out of all of her socials? Did yeah. Well, I think they broke up, actually. But they did spend uh, Valentine's, Valentine's Day together. I think they're working on it, is what the the paparazzi said. Oh, because they're the insiders yeah, of right. all insiders. Right. I don't know. They do know a lot of shit. It's wild. Yeah. Um, there's always a leak. There's always a leak. There's always there's a, a leak for a couple grand. Michael Jordan, right. are you the leak with Larsa? <laughs> MJ. Mm -hmm. MJ's hard up for cash. <laughs> 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 I love when Marcus was like, yeah, my dad was in Paris and asked about it. I'm like, how bougie. I that know. That is so bougie. Very. Um, my favorite part about the episode, I had three things. The best part, Frankie taking the Uber. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cute. Watching Gertie's relationship with Russell. I'm obsessed with them. I want that. Mm -hmm. I want that. Someone give that to me. Yeah. And also Gertie ringing the fuck out of the cancer-free bell. Mm. Cancer-free bell. Because after 127 days, and I don't know if that was of like her chemo and radiation or if that was in total, but after, it said after 127 days, she's cancer-free. So it was snoozy, but then at the very end when they said what everyone was up to, oh, and then we have Nicole who's expecting a baby. <gasps> mm -hmm. So sweet. After, yeah, I was like, oh, this reunion or uh, finale is really happy. The struggle is real and some days are harder than others when it comes to parenting, working, and just adulting in general. And that includes the weekends too. Weekends are usually busier for me than my weekdays and by Monday morning, I'm exhausted and not sure I can do it all again. That's why I started Hydration Mondays with Liquid IV. I need that boost of energy and the eight vitamins and nutrients in Liquid IV. And of course the electrolytes. Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, and it's sugar-free. Liquid IV helps me feel revived and ready to take on the week, and it tastes amazing. They have so many flavors, white peach, green grape, lemon lime, tropical punch, but I'm all about this strawberry lemonade right now. So Liquid IV comes in pre-measured stick packs. You pour one pack into 16 ounces of water, and you drink. And staying hydrated is one of the best things you can do for your physical and mental health. Weekends are for going wild. Have a game plan on Monday with Liquid IV. Grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code LALA at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Superior Hydration today using promo code LALA at liquidiv.com. I think most of you know that I just bought a new house and that I'm not really a fix it myself kind of gal. So if there's a leaky faucet or a problem with the washing machine, I am not the one who's going to fix it. That's where American Home Shield comes in. With AHS, you can protect all those things you don't expect, like leaky faucets or faulty water heaters, which gives you more control when parts of covered appliances or home systems break. So those kinds of not so good surprises won't break your bank. Choose a plan that works for you and your budget. And when a covered item in your home breaks, contact American Home Shield and their trusted and qualified pros will fix it or replace it based on the coverage limits in your agreement. American Home Shield has helped homeowners get their home back up and running for more than 50 years. So go to ahs.com slash GTL now to save $50. That's ahs dot com slash gtl for fifty dollars off any plan american home shield protect what you don't expect see ahs.com for coverage details including limit amounts fees limitations and exclusions anyway there's that did we watch vanderpump rules 
You, you know it. All right. Let's, you know it. Did let's you? Jump into it. Of course I did, but it's, you know, it's very different than last <laughs> year talking about it. Right. So you guys, I told you, I'm going to let y'all run game on it. Quick first note is, I don't know, I know we mentioned it on this podcast, but Bella, which you see in the first scene with Lala, has since passed. Yeah. I told her in that scene, <laughs> take a little nappy. <laughs> and she's... She she's, listened. She, she's oh. a nappy. She listened. She's a very good dog. She's a she napping listened. for the long haul. <laughs> when I, saw, I saw her and I was like, oh. I know. It was beautiful. Little Was angel. I aggressive with her no. when I look at yeah, it? Yeah, you I'm were like, shoving her in the blank. No, you were fine. She was okay. great. Oh, you were fine. Every time, sometimes, even when I'm doing something with Ocean and someone records me, I'm like, I feel like I'm... Aggressive? Mm. I do too, but then... Maybe we but are. But in the I moment, I'm not. No. But like looking at it on video, I'm like, are we like <laughs> jolty? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Could have been That's a bit so softer. <laughs> uh, no, it didn't seem that way. I'm going to say for, so the first scene I noted was Sandoval at the cl- clothing store with Schwartz. Okay. And this annoyed me a little, right? right because he's me. talking in the scene and he's going, you know, since, and he does this thing where he's like, since Rachel didn't, I thought she'd reach out to me on my birthday. I'm not going to quote it exactly, but since she didn't read out, reach out to me on my birthday, I figured, you know, something was wrong. And I'm like, okay, can we go back to that time? Because if you guys remember, she's in a mental health facility and he's out performing. I believe it's around the same time saying, using this scandal all situation on stage as like a funny bit and to get people to like, so he's doing uh, I think a slightly the victim y thing again, where he's like, you know, she's just not speaking to me. Yeah. And in my opinion, for a good point, <laughs> if you guys said, I love you, I know this whole situation is fucked up, but let's just take him and Rachel. If you guys said, I love you, and you were in love and you couldn't stay away from each other, you are being a terrible partner in this scenario. She's at a men- mental health facility, the love, your love, yet you're out doing all these things and on stage and acting kind of like an ass. And then you're like, well, she hasn't reached out to me. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. Good for her, actually. Bravo. I know. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. Uh, like just... the two people who were involved in it, yeah. one takes a step of getting treatment. Yeah. Right. And here Sandoval is upset that Sheena reached out to him when his friend died. But how dare you reach out to me when my friend died, when you've been doing all these podcasts? Well, why would she reach out to you when you've been, like, using this as a bit? You're so upset about all of us making money. It doesn't look like you were sitting there right. hard up for cash. Right. You were also using it as a bit. Performing. Right. You know? He's selling so performances. Just, and yeah. this rocked her fucking world. Yes. And so part, a big part of me, I just said, like, um, and here's for her. Yeah. And you know what? Here's the thing. And people are like, you're going way easier on... on uh, Sandoval than you you did Rachel and again Rachel didn't give me the opportunity to be soft with her Mm -hmm. she just like disappeared great fine whatever but like women always take the brunt of this shit like Sandoval yes he's been taking a beating but nowhere near Raquel and even when they are yourself with a cheese grater Mm -hmm. yes me telling her she's a fucking dumbass you're a whore. Like, it's intense for a chick. Yeah. And even when the guys are labeled, like, cheaters or whatever, it's almost like no a bit deal. of a— Yeah, they go, well, yeah, he's a cheater, but it's it's followed by, but he's a guy. You know, guys will be guys. Yeah. She's a whore. Yeah, Stay away from her. Yeah, she's disgusting. Women don't, you know, it's like the the undertone of, like, well, women shouldn't act that way, but men, you know, they think with their penises. Uh, <laughs> that's why well, we then got I think two heads. my vagina, so. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. That one doesn't have a head on it. <laughs> As a clitoris, though. Mm. You can think with your clit. Mini, brain. Mini, <laughs> mini mind. <laughs> <laughs> mini mind. Okay, Easton. Well, I don't want to keep going no, to my I'm, points. No, I was just going to say, like, even, like, Sandoval, when they were shopping, and they were talking about that, like, Sandoval even trying to, like, inch at, like, well, I think you need to, like, talk about this and, you know, m- mend relationships. Schwartz, you mean? Uh, no. Oh. Yeah, Schwartz to Sandoval. Okay, and okay. Sandoval is just sitting in the corner. He goes, I just want to have a good weekend. And it's like, well, you got to accept the fact before you can have a good weekend with people, my guy. Right, like and playing with is, knives. And, and it stuff. is to the point where I was thinking about it. And Schwartz almost needs needs to give Sandoval, like, an ultimatum. Like, mm-hmm. it, you need to apologize. You need to take you need to take accountability. And if you don't, you're going to lose me. Mm. 
because I feel like they are a good group of friends right, right there. And it's like, I feel like if you were to give them that ultimatum, because that's all I've said and I can't beat a dead horse, accountability. Yeah. That's it. Even James said it. Once he can say that I did this and I fucked up, he'll listen to him. Right. Yeah. And that's all he has to do. And I feel like Schwartz is the only one that maybe can give him that ultimatum. I'm not envious of most of the people on my cast. Mm-mm. See, I never had a relationship with him. <laughs> with Sandoval. Sandoval? Yeah. Yeah. No. So for me, it's like there's nothing to mend. It's like I can forgive you for my own sake, but like we weren't friends before this, so I we don't need to be friends after. Whereas like, what do you do if you've been done dirty like this and he was your best friend? It's hard to find the gray mm-hmm. with someone who you've known for 15 years and who was like your brother. And watched you date and get engaged to that woman. It's very weird. Yeah, okay. very weird. Okay, do you guys want to talk? <laughs> your face. <laughs> Um, I forgot about that. <laughs> you want to hit you in the head and you're like, oh, I remember. Yeah, what's next? <laughs> okay, really quick. I just want to touch on the Brock and Sheena nanny situation because as a full-time nanny myself when I was back in Nashville, I saw this a lot and I heard, I, I heard, I understood Sheena's side, but I also felt for Brock. I, here's what I saw. I would be a full-time nanny for a family. If I was ever out of town or whatever, they'd have an in-law come in or a mom come in to to stay with the kids for the week or stay at the house. And it oh, a lot of times caused tension mm. because it just, you can't treat your mother like you treat an employee. I was not treated bad. I was not mistreated. I was just an employee and that was my boss. So as the nanny, I was able to more be- More of a boundary? More of a boundary with as the mom, it's like the mom can go- you know, the parent would say, we'll do this with her. And the mom would go, no, I don't want to. I want to take her. It was just a weird. Well, so- that's exactly what happens. Okay. With Brock, Sheena, and Erica. Okay. And by the way, if I had a man, mm-hmm. it would be the same with my mother. Right. Because they think that they know the best thing for the baby because they've raised kids. And then you're sitting there going, well, I think I know what's best for the baby because I shoved her out of my vagina. Right. It's a, it's a strange dynamic. Mm-hmm. And I think there's, I think it's, there's a lot of tension between all three of them. And I've seen it because I'm around them a lot. And what's wild is all three of them make sense when you're, when you're an outsider looking in, Mm -hmm. right? But like you said, it's hard to have that boundary when, when it's not an employee, it's like, okay, I'm going to disappear and I'd like there to be the same structure at my house as there is at your house. But um, I think they call Nana. Nana is what they call Erica. Okay. But Nana and Summer Moon have their own dynamic at that house. And the th- problem is with like me and my mom or Sheena and her mom is it's not like you get to see grandma and grandma can spoil and like shove chocolate down there because it's pretty much a daily thing. Right. And you don't it, get to have the same dynamic as like grandson or granddaughter and grandma. Yes. Because you're basically a third parent. Exactly. And I understand also that's a luxury. A lot of families just have to have um, their parents do it. I, my parents did it. It's like, yeah, we're not going to pay a full-time nanny when they're young. They're 21-year-old parents. They're like, we can't afford a full-time nanny, so grandma's going to be watching you. That being said, if you can not afford a full-time nanny, just seeing the different dynamics and like... You know, um, it, I forgot what I was going to say. I lost my train of thought. If it were, if it's up to me, Mm -hmm. money, no money. I would want somebody in my family to take care of my child for more than 24 to 48 hours. For more, not, you wouldn't want? No, I would. Like if I'm gone for 24 hours to 48 hours, I want somebody in my family to be watching over my child. For trust versus a stranger. If I'm going out to dinner. Uh, throw it to anyone right now. Sheena's care. point. That was her point. She's like, yeah. why would you, she not be watched by family? And a stranger would be staying. And that's a great point, too. My mom said that. She goes, when you have a baby, I'm living out there. Because why would you well, leave your baby with exactly. a nanny when you, you could leave it with me? Yeah. No, I know. You don't want a stranger living in your house. No, I, I You don't. And, but but those, not everyone is have. that lucky to have their, their mom, mom or, or dad come in and help with the kids. Mm-hmm. Sheena and I have the luxury of having our moms help out. You also have to remember, Brock is was born an athlete. Athletes have so much structure mm-hmm. down to like the minutes that they nap for, right? So when you talk to Brock and he talks back about how he wants Summer Moon to be, it is like 
talking to someone who is raising a machine, mm -hmm. a fine-tuned machine. Green light, yeah. red light. Yeah, green light means you can get out of your your uh, your crib. Your crib. Red means you stay in the room. By the way, love it with that's all the shit idea. I've been dealing with. And that's with, the thing. And that's with where I Ocean. See... I should have treated her like a fine-tuned machine, <laughs> right? Like they got it figured the fuck out. But I think it's taking the mindset of an athlete. And then just having a parent who's like, I just want to raise a toddler and I just want to like survive it. Yeah. Very different. I do have to, I want to end on this note is that I really, really like Brock and Sheena as a couple. And I think I can learn from them. Brock reminds me a lot of Kyle. Um, they're very communicative. Sheena, they have a traditional masculine feminine dynamic that I really look up to and enjoy for me personally. And I just, I really like them as a couple. And even on the show and outside of the show, I just really respect them as a couple. Well, in every conversation that they always have together, no matter how it's going, you can always tell that Brock has Sheena's best interest mm -hmm. in mind, which mm -hmm. is what I like. Yeah. So. Um, and really quick, can we touch on your freaking look? Is that Gucci? Was that Gucci? What are you talking about? Vanderpump, what's it called? Wolf? Wolf. 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 No, it was like a Balmain a few seasons ago. Balmain really? button up. And then I forgot who makes the uh, the pants and the vest. It was fantastic. Makeup, hair, everything. everything. Thank I, you. Oh, my God. So good. Thank you. So good. I felt like Did it, you yeah. swing? Swing? No. I was going to say. Swing? Didn't. No, I was not. I wish I would have known because I wouldn't have worn. I wouldn't oh. have worn my. That. Valentino <laughs> heels right. that are like. To. Take a sledgehammer to tile. Also, it looked kind of scary. <laughs> what? Shrapnel hitting your eyes and no, stuff? Yeah. I'm I, not. Honestly, I'm even not. if I was in sweatpants, I think I would have declined. I'd have done it. She really? not doing it. <laughs> did they show her? I can't remember. Did they show did, her doing it? I don't think it? they showed Damn her. Damn it. What a disservice they just Why did to like everyone. <laughs> Sheena did it in I her fluffy, think... feathery top and her hot pants. Her hot shoe pants. <laughs> Uh, did you it see was, it? I feel like I saw a clip whether or not it was on socials or in a te trailer teaser. I don't know. Uh, maybe By the not. way, maybe the I trailer teaser, it. they put in a bunch of stuff that's that not gets even cut actually out. in the okay. season. I feel like this week was teeing up for next week. There's next a week, I lose my goddamn okay. mind. Okay, amazing. <laughs> I'm very excited. We were doing so well. And then all of a sudden, I just am put in front of Sandoval and he starts talking to me about some weird shit. Yeah. And I'm staring at him. And then shit just gets real. I'm, where I'm like, oh my God. Hold on, Literally, I, have a I question. start pacing throughout the boat. And I'm like, am I going mad? Have I gone fucking insane? Does Sandoval say that he's been putting himself out there and not you specifically? Or was that just a cut? No, that's me specifically. Okay. Well, How? No, now. Easton. The day before the news broke that he was having an affair, he does an interview with Page Six saying that Lala is corny. Corny! <laughs> he meant horny. That is what he meant. <laughs> and that is a fact. She let us know in the hot tub in that Palm Springs. That does track. That track. Oh, no. Yeah, in Palm Springs. I was like, let me tell you something. Because my mom was like, do you remember what I told you the other day? And I was like, let me tell you something, Lisa. I'm focused on two things right now. Surviving a toddler. Yeah. And actively stopping myself from humping any man that passes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's where my mind is at. Oh, no. If I'm not surviving the toddler in that moment, I'm thinking about fucking. So I'm not listening to anything you're saying. Good for you. Just saying. Um, no. Yikes. And he says, he, he calls me corny and then also says, she just needs to, she's not real. She just needs to be real and share her life more. The <laughs> universe fucking loves me, dude. <laughs> that comes out in the next day. Tom Sandoval is having an affair with Raquel Davis. <laughs> I'm like, Oh. What have I done right? Oh. What have I done right in this lifetime to where I just get blessings on blessings on blessings? <laughs> Thanks, Dad. That's called prayer. Have oh. you heard that song by Mary Mary? She's like, but what they don't know is when I go home and get behind closed doors, man, I hit the flow. Dun, 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 dun. Never. And she goes, it's the God in me. Who? It's the God in me. <laughs> I haven't heard it. Never in my life. I love <laughs> it though. They play it on gospel channels. Really? And I occasionally participate in the gospel <laughs> channel. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Uh, yeah, let's do ache and relief. Eason, pop us off. Um, my ache. I'm honestly not gonna. I don't have one. I'm gonna give. A, uh -huh. It's gonna be a good week. You're so positive. There's no one said. So I'm excited. I feel good. 
bit tired, but we'll get by it. Mm-hmm. And then um, my relief of the week has honestly been uh, Miss Peaches and all Ms. of that Peaches. going on. Dave Portnoy. With Dave Portnoy making, I have no idea what it is at, th- at this point, but I think it was like $200,000 mm-hmm. to, and I do want to get it right. It's in Atlanta, the Georgia. Atlanta based Lifeline Animal Project. Aww. You know what? Who Shout saved? out to him because he has always been someone where people look at him and they're like, he's a misogynistic prick. Yeah. And that very well may be true. Well, but he adopted dogs. Miss Peaches, Peaches and she's got nipples for days. <laughs> I know, but they're going and away he just like Bernie Burns. loves Byrne. her. He loves Miss Peaches. <laughs> Miss Bernie Burn had big old nipples like Miss Peaches. He was Peaches. talking about saving animals on this like Fox News channel. And they were like, President Biden had a dog who bit 25 times. And he was like, well, that says more about the owner. If your dog's bite, bitten <laughs> yeah. 25 times, it's not getting the love that it deserves. Yeah, yes. Says that dog's not getting enough of love and attention. And you know what? I agree. He said something that I stand firm with as well. There's no such thing as bad dogs, only bad owners. Agreed. I like that. I mm-hmm. agree. Mm-hmm. All right, Jessica? Um, my, uh, ache and relief is in one. So my relief is that I went to the jujitsu <laughs> qualifiers at 10th Planet headquarters. Not, I didn't compete. I just went to oh, watch. Uh, with, are you kidding was, me? We're going I thought to, you competed. No, are you we're kidding going me? You're to going to oh my God, That's right. That's right. That is going to be in, in May. Night? That's April or May. But, um, so I went with my crew from 10th Planet Burbank, and it was so fun. I loved watching it. But the um, ache is that I had never been there before. So it's a small, it's a gym. And I just kept using the men's restroom. On and, purpose? No, not on purpose. But I kept walking back. And it was there. Was I mean, a, it's Los Angeles. Right. But there was a clear, like, I didn't, I just wasn't thinking. A lot was going on. There was a men's restroom. And right next door, right next to it was a women's restroom. And I kept going into the men's. And I saw a couple of people, like, like, I walk, because urinals were out in the open. So if mm. I walk in, a man would be peeing and I would see. I didn't see that. But, there but you'd were, think you'd spot a urinal in front of you. I saw a million urinals. And I just thought, oh, interesting that there are urinals in here. You thought how Did progressive. You yes. You thought how progressive. That's no, amazing. I literally just went pee three times and then I finally walked out. In the out. urinal? No, not in oh, the urinal. I'm proud of you. In the toilet. But I walk back and I'm like, oh, urinals. And then I go, I do that like three times. And finally, the third time I walk out and a girl comes up to me. And she goes, hi, um, this is the men's restroom. And wow. I'm, She's lucky that you didn't identify it because that <gasps> could go real wrong. Yeah. I know. And I was like, she was like, or she was like, I don't know if you know this is the men's restroom. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. And All I was right. like, oh I my know. God. <laughs> I had no I idea. Know. <laughs> So that was fun. <laughs> but yeah. the amount of times that I've also done that, though, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, thank you. You know, what, uh, whatever. whatever. It's 2024. We're all equal. We're all. Um, Use whatever restroom you want. Thank that's you. how I, I wish feel. a girl would walk in on me, Pete. I'm just trying hey, to baby. relieve myself. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's it. Because I rock it until I literally can't, until my eyeballs are floating. <laughs> Not good for your bladder, Law. Oh, really? Really? I always thought it made it bigger. No, why like do you the, want a big bladder? Lo- so I can wait Hold longer. <laughs> no. So I can go round that's round bacteria. trip. That's bacteria. No, that's bacteria you gotta get rid in of your, it. Yeah, that's how you can get, get like bladder <laughs> infections <laughs> and things like that. You know, holding pee for too long. Mm-hmm. You don't want that. Oh God, I need to do more more research on the human body. <laughs> you, you're not. <laughs> All right, my age of the week. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm the most. I come I from... I get a rise. No, no, no. I come from Kent Burningham, okay? <laughs> Do you know what that name means? Was he so hygienic? I, I th- oh, my God. He was my was father, he? I think, as well, no, so you, I, I think I do. Let me tell you something. He'd come up to me and be like, so I noticed that um, the toothbrush that I laid out for you uh, still had toothpaste on it. Did you not brush your teeth this morning? I go... I did brush my teeth this morning, Dad, but I'm 16 years old and use my own bathroom. I don't come into your bathroom to brush my teeth any longer and haven't for quite some time. That's so cute. He brushed he my hair watching. until I was about 15. Watching. I haven't I haven't seen you um use the Q-tips in a while. Do we need to talk about it? I'm like, I use my own bathroom, Dad. I use my own bathroom now. That is so cute. I didn't know this about him. I love that. Oh, oh yeah. I love that. Most. That's why, Ethan, don't fuck with me, dude. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> What's your ache and relief? Um, my ache of the week is I don't like giving people <laughs> like this any attention, but now I'm pissed off. All right? So there's this <gasps> stupid bitch. 
It's still there. That, that's how you okay. start off strong. Her name's Jennifer O'Brien. Okay, and I'm outing her now because she's she's pissing me off. She is a writer for reality. What is this? Know. Reality. Von Teese. Reality. <laughs> no. She's a writer for reality. Okay. Reality T. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, the moment you see her face, you know she's fucking annoying, right? Now, I'm fine with her making her little measly sum of money off of like an article about Lala's a bitch or Lala's a whore or Lala's whatever, right? Don't care. What I do care is when you start talking about sobriety. As if you know one fucking thing about it, all right? She goes on to write about people on Reddit did not respond kindly to me saying in my interview, I don't recognize uh, California sober or sober curious, okay? And she talks about how it's not sitting right and people, um, I could be setting people back in wanting to make a change. Let me tell you something. If you're trying to make a change in your life by cutting out marijuana or drinking or cutting out drinking but not marijuana or whatever it may be I'm not the person to look up to okay I do not recognize those things I don't because I've sat in rooms with people who have who have told the most horrific stories okay where the only way out of it is to never pick up a drink or a substance ever again right this woman this Jennifer O'Brien shedding light on what people are saying on reddit okay They've never gotten the phone calls that I've gotten where people are desperate. I'm going to start getting emotional. Desperate. They've tried to stop drinking. They only smoke weed. They only do mushrooms, okay? And they, they call me or text me saying, I met you however many years ago, or I met you last week, and I'm begging for someone to help me get sober, to live. For this woman to write anything beyond there is sobriety and there is not is so fucking reckless. And that is the only reason why I am outing this Jennifer O'Brien right now because I could not believe it. How dare you Mm -hmm. sit in the rooms that I've sat in and then you can talk about it because I guarantee you you're going to leave there and you're going to have the same opinions that I have. Those rooms are saving people's lives and those people are sober. No, I don't recognize anything. There's sober, there's not. Period. And if you don't like what I'm saying, fucking kick rocks. <laughs> Blow me, Jennifer O'Brien. Like, she's pissing me off with that shit. Yeah. Boo. Anyway. Shame. 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 Oh, fuck you, Jennifer O'Brien. <laughs> I can't stand that hoe. Um, my relief of the week <laughs> <laughs> is getting that off my chest. <laughs> Good. I've been sitting on it. Yeah. Um, was that producer John? Producer John brought me Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies. Most people bring me the Samoas. I'm fine with that because those are good. But people don't know that the Thin Mints are actually my most favorite, and they were my dad's favorite too. I also finished the book, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Oh, what's up? It was absolutely fantastic. I believe it's an older book. But I recommend you guys read it. The mic. <laughs> anyway, whoa, that just got real heated. Real heated. That was. <laughs> Thank you. And if for you the have cookies. a problem, Jennifer O'Brien, you can send it to fucking Daryl because people, because as Dorinda says, eagles don't fly with pigeons, bitch. Bitch. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy <laughs> the podcast. I wonder if we'll get any sponsors on this podcast. <laughs> we'll lose I, them all. I, I, no, I hope not. Anyway, I love you guys so much. Um, reminder that uh, the video of this comes out Friday at 9 a.m. Bonus episodes air every Monday. That's the visual and audio um, wherever you get your podcast, and it's on YouTube. And happy hump day, everybody. Go out there and be, don't be good. Don't be good, Brooklyn. Be great. <laughs> Jay-Z. All right, I love you guys. Bye. (laughs) Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and I will catch you next week.